Yellowstone receives an average of 150 inches of snow a year, and sometimes double that in the higher elevations. Most of the park's roads are closed to cars in the winter, so for our trip to Norris Geyser Basin, we're taking a snow coach. Look at this beast. These snow coaches are heavy duty. They're like a bus, but with tracks like a snowmobile so they can plow through snow. Most of the major sites like Old Faithful and Mammoth Hot Springs are open year round and accessible by snow coach. We're cruising along and then out of the corner of my eye, I spot something big and brown outside. This has got to be a bison. Up to 5,000 bison roam the park, split between two herds. The largest herd grazes right here in the northern end of the park. Oh man, look at the size of those two those guys. guys are big. You can tell that they're both males because they are gigantic. Those guys are at least 2,000 pounds. And they're right next to the river, which is not frozen over. That tells me that there might be a hot spring that's keeping the water a little warmer than usual. During the winter months, bison migrate to lower elevations where the snow and temperatures are milder. Bison have to eat 10% of their body weight a day to survive the winter. That's almost 200 pounds of grass a day. They use their broad heads and powerful neck muscles to sweep away the snow to get at it. Oh my gosh, oh, he's man. running. Oh my gosh. Wow, he's booking it. I have never seen a bison run like that before. Oh man. Oh, he's taking off. That's why you don't want to get too close to those guys. Bison can run up to 35 miles per hour, and they are much more agile than they appear. Ooh, you smell that? I do. That's the geysers. That's sulfur. The hot springs and geysers release hydrogen sulfide, which smells like rotten eggs. Yellowstone has the highest concentration of geothermal features in the world and contains more than half of all geysers on Earth. They're all powered by the supervolcano bubbling away underground. Norris Geyser Basin is the hottest and most active spot in the park. We've got two areas to check out. We're starting with Porcelain Basin. The milky color of the mineral deposits that bubble up inspired the name. Oh, there they are. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Look at that thing pumping. So this is our first overlook of Black Growler steam vent. Steam vents, or fumaroles, are usually found on hillsides above a hot spring. Water that seeps into the ground is rapidly boiled and spewed out as steam. Oh, it's here comes right the out. cloud. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, That's nice, actually. Bit, yeah. These steam vents are the hottest geothermal features here and can get up to 280 degrees. That steam was not 280 degrees, luckily for us. <laughs> <laughs> Still, I'll take any warmth I can get. <laughs> All right, let's get down there. OK. As the steam clears, we catch sight of the boardwalk. It's kind of fun. It's this perfect little path that takes you through almost this alien zone of geysers, hot springs, and all these other geothermal features. One of the most important things to remember is to stay on the boardwalk. It can be extremely dangerous for you, but it's also a fragile ecosystem. I start to see what looks like a stream, but it's bright green. Different temperatures produce different color bacteria. Green's pretty hot, but it's not as hot as the other ones where you get into the blues. The bright colors are a result of thermophiles, microorganisms that thrive in super hot temperatures. Blue water can be more than 200 degrees. It's so cool how you can just by color tell the temperature. Yeah. And you know it's bacteria or algae because they're the only things that can survive in water this hot. <laughs> now it's time to check out the back basin and the tallest geyser in the world. This is Steamboat Geyser. When it erupts, it's over 300 feet. Now, the chances of it erupting on the one day that we're here, probably not going to happen, but you never know. The last major eruption was in September 2014, but it's totally unpredictable. In between, you get these mini eruptions of 10 to 40 feet. It's spouting. It's pretty amazing how these geysers work. Essentially, you've got this heat source, which is the super volcano, and this water, which is going through these basically little pipes, heats up, and it just forces it up, which is why you get these spouts of water that just shoot out of the ground. Those pipes, they're connected. So if steamboat erupts, some of these other hot springs around it will actually get drained 
because of all the water's being sucked and spit out through this guy. So we're standing here hoping that this thing will erupt. Three, two, one, let's go! We might be out of luck with this plan. Yes, it's working! Oh, <laughs> you, got, you got 20 feet, I think. I got 20 feet. <laughs> Not a full on eruption, but hey, it's doing something. Yeah. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.